Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about Lambda expression in Java. The thing is, Java 19 has already released. Java 20 will be coming next March and now we are talking about a feature which was launched in 2014, which was in Java 8. Now the question is why we are talking about Java 8 feature now? Because it is one of the most important and most amazing feature introduced in Java after I could say generics and collection API. So in 1.2, we got collection API. In 1.5, we got generics. And now in 1.8, we got Lambda expression. Now, even before we talk about Lambda expression, let's talk about interfaces. Now, what happens is whenever you design an application, you design the application for different classes, right? See, ultimately, it's all about objects. And to create the object, first you write classes, right? And then sometimes to, to make it more abstract, to define the behavior, we go with the interfaces. So basically we declare the behavior in the interface and we define the behavior in the class, right? Again, that's a design decision you take, what interface to create, what classes to create. But basically we have a concept of interfaces and we have talked about it before. The idea here is when you talk about interfaces, an interface can be of different types, not depend upon how many methods you have. Example, in one interface, you can have multiple abstract methods, right? Now, in that case, that interface becomes a normal interface. An interface can have one method. Now, in Java 8, it is called a functional interface. Now, before Java 8, it used to call SAM, which is single abstract method. And then we got a special interface which doesn't have any method. I know that sounds weird, uh, which is called a marker interface, but in this video, let's not talk about marker interface. Let's talk about the functional interface. That's right. Now you might be thinking, why someone would use an interface which has only one method? What if I say most of the interfaces in Java are functional interface? And in Java 8, it got a special feature. Okay, I will show you that here. So let's talk about functional interface. As I mentioned before, a functional interface is an interface which has only one method, okay? So what I will do is I got my IntelliJ ID already here. And in this SRC, let me create a Java class. We'll name this Java class as demo because I just want to write everything in one file. So this is my demo file. And in this, I want a main method. So I can say main uh, control space done. So that's my main method, but we'll not be using this at this point. I want to create some classes interface, right? This is what want. this is where I want to see the output. So what I want to do is I want to create a simple interface here. As I mentioned before, it's all about interfaces for this video. So I will create an interface and we'll name this interface as a, again, not a good way of naming your interfaces, but just for the example, I'm getting an interface called a, and in this interface, I can mention multiple methods, right? And abstract methods. Now, basically in Java 8, things have changed. A lot of people were against this concept where you can define the methods and interface. So these are, those are called default methods. But let's not talk about those things. Let's only talk about abstract methods. So here, basically, uh, we can have multiple methods, right? But we want to make sure that this is a functional interface. Now, if you want to restrict an interface to have only one method, example, let's say, if I go back to this interface and if I say void show, let's say I want to have a show method here. And apart from this, I also want to have a method which will return an int value called add, which may take some parameters, doesn't matter. So you can see I have an interface which has two methods. In fact, you know, let me just increase the font size a bit. Okay, so what I will do is here, I will just make this as a functional interface. Now, this is a special annotation given to the interface where you can only have one method. So if you have two methods and if you make it functional interface, it will not work. You can say it gives you an error. It says multiple non-overriding abstract methods found in interface A. Okay, that simply means in English terms is you cannot have more than one method. So we can remove this. Now that becomes your functional interface as simple as that. Okay, and now I can create a class. So basically, can I create an object of interface? Let's try that. And everyone knows, right, we can't do that. And this is one of the most famous uh, interview question. Can I create object of interface? And the answer is no, you can't create object of interface. But yes, you can create an implementation. And then you can create the object. So can I say we can create the object of the implementation of the interface? Okay, what I'm simply saying is, we can create a class which implements the interface, and then we can create the object of a class. Okay, so if I come back here, if I say a obj equal to new a, of course, this will not work. 
uh, you can see it will give you an error. If I go back here, it says A is abstract, cannot be instantiated. Okay, makes sense. So in this particular video, we'll also talk about anonymous class, okay, anonymous inner class uh, to understand this more. So what I will do here is I have the interface and then I'm trying to create the object which will not work. One of the way you can do that is by creating a class, I can say class B and we have to say implements A, of course, this is one way. And in this particular class, I can create a method. Basically, I can define this method, which is show. So I can say public void show. And basically, I don't want to do something special. I can simply type hi. I know that sounds weird, but let's go with hi here. And now, instead of creating object of A, we can create object of B. This is what I, will, uh, I have mentioned before, right? Uh, okay, there's no error. And now using this OBJ, I can call show. Nothing fancy till this point, right? Simple stuff, we just created the object and now, if I want to run this code, I can right click and say run demo and we got the output. You can see that we got high. So this is working. But then the idea is I don't want to create a separate class. Now, first of all, why will you create a separate class? Uh, it's because we wanted to implement the interface and to do that, we create a separate class. But what if this class will be used only once in the entire project? You're going to create only one object of this class, then why? to create a separate class. Do we have a solution where I don't want to get a class? Now you might be thinking, what's wrong with creating a class? The only thing is if you have more classes, you have to maintain more files. You have to maintain a lot of documentation for one file. So it's better to avoid classes when required. If you know that it will be used only once, you can avoid it. But how? We'll talk about it in some time. But there's one more thing. Remember when I started this video, I mentioned that in, in the functional interface, we can have only one method. There's only one twist here. Example, let's say, of course, if I create a method which, is, which, which says something like this, if I say int add, it will give you some bad words. You can see it says uh, you cannot have more than one non-overriding methods. Now what it means, it simply means you cannot have more than one method, right? But then what is non-overriding here? Let me show you something. If I say string to string and bracket, you can see there's no error. Now this is not complaining. Function interface says, hey, that's fine. Two string works. You know why this works is because two string is a method which is there in the object class. And every class in Java extends an object class. Example, if I say extends object, and if I click on this object, you can see object class has a lot of methods. And one of them, one of the method is two string. If I scroll down, down, yeah, can you see that we got two string method. Now what happens is every class in Java extends object class and that's why the two string method is already a part of a class. And that's why function interface says that's fine. If you use any method which is there in the object class, it is allowed because any way it is getting implemented. So it, is, it will not complain. Okay. Uh, so basically it has only focus on show method and that's why it says it's, it has only one non-overriding abstract method. Okay, uh, time let's, let me remove this. I just wanted to show you that concept there. But now I got this, right? I don't want this class B. So the other way of doing this, I will just comment this part. Since we don't want it, I can just comment it. And now, how will I work with B? So what I will do is I will go back to my A and here, but how will you create the object? See, you can't create the object of A is because we don't have the implementation. But what if we can create the implementation there itself? That's right. So just after your new A round brackets, we can write the implementation, a class itself. Okay. And if you can do this, this particular concept is called anonymous inner class because we are creating a class without any name. You can see we don't have B anymore. Earlier we had a name for the class. This time we don't have a name. Second, it is inner class. Why this inner class is because we are creating a class inside a class demo. So that's an inner class. So we can say this is anonymous inner class. And in this anonymous inner class, basically you can define your method. So which method we are talking about? This show method. So I can come back here and I can say public void show and I can basically print the same thing. I can print hi. Okay. Or maybe I can say hi in show just for a different text. And okay, that's it. Let's run this code and let's see if this works. So basically what we're doing is we, instead of using a normal class with a name, we are going for anonymous inner class. I will right click and it will say run demo. And that worked. Didn't you see that we got high in show? This works, but now we have a twist. The twist is, see, this was a syntax which we were using till Java 7. 
And in Java 8, they introduced something, which is Lambda expression. So what Lambda expression says is, now think about this. See, as a human, we know how to complete the sentence, right? Example from our childhood, we are learning something like Johnny, Johnny. So someone will say, yes, Papa, right? So basically we try to complete stuff. In the same way, Java says, hey, it's A OBJ. Now A is the interface and you're trying to say OBJ equal to, of course, someone will say new A, right? That's, if you can complete that, why not Java? Why not your compiler says, hey, you don't worry. You simply say A OBJ. I know how to complete the sentence. I know how to say new A because we know the interface name. I also know how to open the curly brackets. I also know how to write public void show. Okay, but how exactly your compiler will know which method you want to define? It's because A is a functional interface which has only one method. So of course your compiler can also write this part, public void show. And then as a programmer, your job is to only define what goes inside the method. So don't you think as a programmer, you should only focus on the logic, not these two lines. That's what your compiler says. You can remove it. Okay, but then you can see we got the error. But remember this thing, when, I remove, when I'm removing that part, I'm also removing this curly brackets here. So if I remove this curly bracket, I have to also remove this outer curly brackets here, the ending one. So what I will do is I will just delete this part and I also remove the curly brackets from here. I will put the semicolon on the same line. Okay, but still there's an error. Now we have to define that this particular block belongs to a method, which is your show method. So in that case, we can just put a arrow here. Now this arrow is also called a arrow function or a lambda expression, right? Now people who are coming from JavaScript, it's very similar. We use double equal to and uh, the angular brackets. Here we use lambda expression. This is called lambda expression here. Uh, we can say arrow, but then let's be Java term, which is lambda here. We did the same thing which we have done here, only this number of lines. Now the beauty is, this is a block. This is a block which defines the method. This is the parameter. This is the parameter for the method. Example, in show, if you can pass some parameters, you can do it here as well. So whatever round packets we have here is same as this. So if you pass some parameters, you can mention that here, and you can also mention that here. This is a lambda expression. And this block can have multiple statement. Okay, that perfectly works. But what if you only have one statement? In that case, you can simply remove these curly brackets. And since we have two semicolon, I can remove one. And we can write everything in one line. I know you, you may need to watch this video multiple times because I've done I've deleted some code uh, and you have to try it on your machine first. Otherwise, it's very difficult to understand. So make sure that you try this out and this is how your Lambda expression looks like, okay? So this code from here to here is a replacement for this entire code, okay? So this is a Lambda expression. The one thing to remember, this thing will not be called automatically. You need to call it, okay? You are defining the function here, but you have to call the function as well. And now let's see if this works. I will say run, right click run and it worked. Can you see that we got high in show? So that's how basically you use Lambda expression in Java. Of course, it has multiple other features as well. What if you want to return a value? What if you want to uh, pass the values? That we'll see in the upcoming videos.